Hey guys, it's me, Holly Madison. Welcome back to my channel. Today's video is a little different. I have wet hair. My lighting is weird. I can't even figure out what went wrong with it. I think something's blocking a light up there, but it's like the dark side of the moon over here. But anyway, I'm just keeping it real today. I'm gonna do my makeup in front of you and answer your questions. Today is a Q&A, so if you wanna hear my answers to your questions, please hit the like and subscribe button and let's get started. Okay, so I have a list of questions I gathered. I kinda did it first come first serve. I didn't pick any repetitive questions, of course, and if it was something I talked about in a video before, I didn't pick it, but I just picked like the first 20 questions I saw. And the first one I have written down here, I'm actually gonna save till last because it might end up being a rant. So but my second question is from Lee and she asks, do I have any life regrets? And I think when people wonder if I have any life regrets, they might be like thinking maybe I wished I hadn't dated certain people or something like that. And I don't really have any regrets because if anything was a bad situation, something good ended up coming out of it or I learned something I needed to learn. The only thing I have regrets about is one time I sold this house and I should have just kept it and rented it out. Like I'm into real estate investing. I have some investment properties and there was this one house I sold at one point in my life because I was just like sick of dealing with the HOA. I was just like, let's just sell it. And looking back, I realized it would have been smarter to keep it. And it's just one of those things that sticks in my head, which I guess is good because I won't make that mistake again. And it's annoying to me and it would have been really useful for me if I had kept that house. So that's my regret is there was a house I sold that I should have just rented out instead of selling. That was probably a way less spicy answer than you wanted, but gotta be real, that's, that's my big regret in life. The next question is from somebody else named Holly and she asks what my favorite skincare is. I mean, I'm gonna sound real basic right now, but I think it's just La Mer. Like after I've exfoliated, I just wanna slap on some of the basic La Mer cream and you know let it do its thing let it absorb and then i feel super hydrated i especially love to use it when i'm in vegas i split my time between la and vegas and vegas is so dry so i use it a lot when i'm there to rehydrate and my next question from bubbla is what is my favorite thing about disneyland i think my favorite thing is just the feeling i get when i go there i think i love it so much because when i was a kid we would go there for family vacations and everybody just kind of put their differences aside. Like if anybody was like fighting, they put it aside. Like my mom was never grumpy when we were there. Like my dad was never asking me what I was planning on doing for college or anything like that. It was just like everything got put aside and everybody wanted to have a good time. And I think that's why I still to this day get such a great feeling when I go there is because that was kind of imprinted on me in childhood. Francesca asks, if you could be any Disney princess, who would you be? I would be Elsa. I'm obsessed with Elsa. I think she's so amazing and powerful and doesn't need any man. I have a man who I love, but I'm like needing a man, if you know what I mean. Arnicole9 asks, if I still speak French? <laughs> Not very well. I'm so behind. I haven't practiced in so long. I haven't been to France in about two years. And every time I go, people there are more and more acclimated to speaking English. And when I try and speak French, it's like they appreciate it, but they cut me off and just start speaking English. Not in a rude way. I think they're just trying to be accommodating. I notice that's a big thing with Uber drivers out there. But you know, I love being immersed because that's when it really comes out. Like I feel like I forget the language and then it comes out more when I'm immersed. And it was something I tried really hard to teach my kids, but Rainbow, at maybe about age four, just decided she did not want to speak French. And anytime I try and read the French books to her, she like gets irritated. But I hope, but she did speak it well when she was really young. And I hope that that sticks with her. So when she wants to learn languages when she's older, it makes it easier because, you know, according to a psych class I took in college, if you learn a second language before age three, it's supposed to make it really easy for you to learn other languages going forward because your brain de literally develops in a different way. Like you can store more than one language in one area if you do it before age three. And supposedly if you learn another language after age three, you have to develop another, they call it a Broca's area in your brain to store the language and it makes it a little less easy. So hopefully she appreciates my efforts one day, but <laughs> we'll see. You guys, my lighting today is so rough and I don't know what to change because this is that's well, probably because my mirror is here blocking some of it. 
but it's like I have this dark shadow. It's like the area in the Pride Lands where the lions can't go, where the hyenas are. It's like, I was just talking about Lion King in case you didn't catch that. Mary asks if I have any upcoming projects I'm working on. Yes, I have a lot. And I'm at this really weird point in my life right now where I have this handful of projects I'm really excited about. And they're all like ready to go, but they're not quite at the point where they're crossing the finish line yet. And they're not really quite at the point where it's worth talking about because I don't want to talk about something and then for whatever reason, like have it not go. And then people are like, well, whatever happened to that? Or maybe it'll change drastically or take away from an announcement later on. But yeah, I have about five different projects of different types. It's not like five of the same thing. Like I have a podcast coming out. I have a TV show I'm working on. I have two books. So it's just all these things I've been working hard on and hopefully <laughs> I can share them with you soon. Rosalie asks if I want any more kids, not specifically, like it's not something I would totally rule out to the point where I'd like, you know, get a hysterectomy or anything. It's not like that. But I mean, I have two kids and they're amazing and they're healthy and adorable. And I love, I'm, I'm just, I recognize how blessed I am and how easy I have it. And I don't really feel a need to like go back to the drawing board really. Zoe asks what my favorite movie is. My favorite movie is Casino. I love the look of Casino. I love the story. Everything about it's good. The art direction, the story, the actors. I love it. I love Sharon Stone in that movie. I love her look. It's so iconic. Out of all the places I've lived, I feel like Vegas is my hometown. I mean, it still is. Like I split my time between Vegas and LA, but that's like my main residence and I just love it and I feel like Casino is like the quintessential Vegas movie and it's so well done and so high quality and there's so many little, you know, local Easter eggs you can find in there and I love it. PTBO Blonde asked me if I've ever been to Canada. Yes, many times. I actually grew up in Alaska, but my family's relatives all lived in Oregon. So oftentimes when we would go and visit those relatives, we would drive all the way down like the Alcan, which is like the Alaska Canada Highway in case you don't know or don't watch those Alaska shows. And it would be crazy because it's really cold there and sometimes we'd go in the winter and you'd have to plug your car in outside so the engine wouldn't freeze. And you know, they have porridge instead of oatmeal. Those are like my favorite things I remember when I was little. And as an adult, um, gosh, the last time I've been to Canada was a long time ago. I think it was back when I shot Scary Movie 4 and that was like in 2006 or something. It was in Vancouver, so it's been a minute. But yeah, I love Canada. Sorry if the sound sucks on this, by the way, because it's super hot right now. We're having a major heat wave in LA and I can't not have my air conditioner on or I'd be dying in front of my makeup lights, but you can hear it and it kind of sucks. So sorry about that. So Lauren wanted to know how my boyfriend and I met and it's kind of a long story because it was one of those situations where we met a few times before we really connected. And I don't know why we never connected. It's weird because I feel like we're such a good match. And it was odd because he lived across the street from my best friend in Vegas for a long time. But in Vegas, it's just so hot all the time. You don't like see your neighbors outside. So it's not like I would have gone over to her house and run into him or anything. But still, just the fact that like my best friend knew him and they lived, were neighbors. They lived across the street from each other. It's just odd that we never really like hooked up before. But I'm glad we didn't because I don't think it would have been the right time for either of us. I think it would have been a disaster. The first time I met him, it was way back in 2011, so long ago. I was doing an appearance at a nightclub at the Wynn and he and the rest of his cast were there. And it was one of those things where you show up and you're hosting the night. So they take your picture on the step and repeat. And then the people at the club will want you to take pictures with other certain people. Like if there's other people who are like celebrities there they'll want you to take a picture with them and blah 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 so we took a picture together but it was a really busy night and I was getting like rushed around different places and I had like friends in town that I was entertaining and stuff so we didn't like stop and talk or have time for any of that and then the second time I met him was like in 2017 it was my birthday and my husband at the time and some of our friends we went to his haunted museum in Vegas and he was there that night and we met, but I was married at the time, so I'm not looking at other guys that way. So that wasn't a thing. So anyway, my friend wanted to go to his museum and I was like, yeah, let's go. And it's not a thing where he's always there. Like he goes there a lot. He's really super involved and loves it. 
but he's not obviously not there all the time so I wasn't like expecting to see him or anything I was just going because I like haunted things and I'd had a lot of fun at the museum when I'd gone before so we went and then somebody who was working at the front was like oh you know he wanted to like give you tickets I was like oh that's really nice so I posted about it I noticed that he was posting <laughs> It's so weird, like the stuff that appeals to me. But he was posting like all of these pictures of like old creepy puppets he had. And I like started talking to him about puppets and that's how we started talking. And we were talking for about like three weeks before we finally got around to hanging out. And, and the rest is history. So that was like the end of May of last year. So that's my really long story about how I met my boyfriend, sorry. If you weren't particularly into that question, you probably tuned out by now. Heidi wants to know if I still have my chickens. Yes, they're not mine, they're my ex-husband's. We had them at the house we shared in Vegas and he had this really cool chicken coop built. It was on a show called Redwood Kings and it's the most amazing chicken coop, I think, in the world. It's really beautiful. It was built with reclaimed wood. It looks really old and beautiful. It looks like something out of medieval normandy or something it's just amazing i've posted on my instagram story before but yeah we still have the chickens the kids love them and you know it's special rachel wants to know what some of my favorite memories from the playboy mansion are that takes me a second to think of because i don't really think back to my time at the mansion with a lot of nostalgia i think people who watched the girls next door probably think i do because everything looked so fun on the show and there were fun times, don't get me wrong, but it's definitely, there were a lot of grim times for me too, a lot of them. So if I had to think of like favorite memories at the mansion, I would think of just times where I got to hang out with the other women and we were just kind of like carefree and not really worried about, oh my God, am I gonna break a rule? Am I gonna get kicked out tomorrow? Is somebody gonna stab me in the back? Because that was the anxiety that was kind of constantly plaguing me while I was there. But there were times like I really loved the 4th of July party because Hef was always busy like playing backgammon with his friends. So it was one of the few parties where I was allowed to kind of run around and just socialize on my own. At the other parties, I was expected to be sitting at the table or dancing right in front of the table all night. And it was fun. It was just fun to hang out with the other girls and go down the slip and slides and all that fun stuff. Every year they would have a big Halloween party and there was always this really big haunted house set up in one of the lawns. And there was one night, a whole bunch of us just went into the haunted house before the Halloween party. So there was nobody out there working or trying to scare people, but it was just, there was something fun and even more scary about just going through the unmanned haunted house at night. We had fun. But those are the kind of things that are my favorite memories is just like, the nights that kind of felt like a slumber party where you're just hanging out with the other girls and doing fun things or if Bridget and I would go out on an adventure or something it was never like the nightclubs we went to or like the fancy events like that stuff got old really fast I always felt like there was a lot of pressure associated with it and the whole thing was just too adult for me it was like a weird existence because on one hand it's like we had this curfew and we weren't like out dating people like normal 20 somethings so it kind of felt like this extended adolescence but at the same time some of the stuff was like really adult and yeah those weren't my favorite memories but stuff like slip and slides and haunted houses were crystal asks what i've been up to since my last book my last book came out in 2016 so four years ago now I had a baby that same year, Forrest, my second kid. So the rest of that year was really just spent adjusting to having two kids. Anybody who has more than one kid can probably attest to the fact that it's difficult to try and, you know, get two kids who are not the same age and have very different sleeping styles and different bedtimes and different nighttime routines kind of to bed on time, just little things like that just kind of take over your life. So there was that. I wrote two other manuscripts that have yet to come out since I've done that. So super busy, just not doing a lot of things in the public eye. I really wanted to find some privacy and just kind of like reboot my life in private for a while. I mean, not totally in private, because obviously like right now I'm on social media, but I just needed to take a minute. Like I've been living my life for so long as like this reality TV person who was like going to all these events and doing all this press because at the time 
that really helped when you were doing a reality TV show, but it was just like a lifestyle that wasn't feeding my soul anymore. And I felt like I couldn't really have a genuine personal life doing all that kind of thing. So just the past four years for me have just all been all about starting over and rebalancing and figuring out like where's the line between my private life and what I'm willing to be genuine and share. Like there's people out there who are like, why don't you ever post a picture with your boyfriend? It's like, okay, look at my dating history and look at some of the weird relationships or situations I've been in that have been super, super public. Like I've lost my taste for it. Like maybe I wanna keep stuff kind of private. It's like there's two kinds of haters. There's like the haters that are like, why don't you ever post stuff? And then there's the haters who like, if I tag my boyfriend in like one tiny story thing, they lose their minds. So it's like, you can't really win either way, but I'm not doing any of that to please anybody else anyway. It's just like what I'm comfortable with. Okay, my next question was two questions I combined. One was, have you ever experienced anything paranormal? And the other was, when did you first start drawing? And I think I combined those because my first ever drawing that my mom has in my baby book, I drew a ghost. So maybe that was my first paranormal experience. I don't know. Sherry G asks, how do you keep in shape? Sherry, I'm still struggling. <laughs> like finding time to work out. My goal is to work out every day, but of course I don't have time for that. So I end up working out maybe three or four times a week. I do circuit training at home. Um, you know, walking my dog, the neighborhood I live in, it's very hilly. So it's a lot of inclines. So even walking my dog can feel like a workout sometimes. I do TikTok dances, I learn those, and that's the aerobic portion of my workout, and then I do my circuit training. Um, mostly though, it's diet. Like, me losing weight after my last child has been mostly due to dieting. Rebecca asks if I would get married again in the future. You know, I don't need to. I already had my dream wedding. You know, I'd be good being like a Goldie Hawn, Kurt Russell type thing when I'm older, like that would be ideal I think. Cindy asks what was your favorite trend in the early 2000s? I'm not gonna say it's my favorite trend now like anything I want to repeat but back then I loved to put Swarovski crystals on everything. Like I was a really big fan of Dita Von Teese who used to go watch her shows all the time and and everything she has on stage her costumes her props they're just covered with Swarovski crystals and look so pretty under the lighting and they're so sparkly and I used to love to do all my costumes for parties that way and but the other some Swarovski crystal stuff got played out real fast like the Swarovski crystal phones and license plate frames Swarovski laptops it's like mm. so Swarovski has its place but at the time in the early 2000s I wanted crystals on everything like it did not matter the context Okay, so that first question I had written down that I thought would turn into a rant is from Lauren and she goes, what's the biggest misconception of you? One thing people think you are that you're not. I mean, that's pretty easy. You can probably guess what I'm gonna say. And it's the stupid thing that like haters love to go to anytime they just wanna like be hateful or like disqualify me. People always say I'm a gold digger and I don't even know how to say this succinctly. I wrote a whole book called Down the Rabbit Hole if you wanna read. <laughs> if you want to hear about like my time with Playboy and everything like that. And clearly that situation was not a normal relationship. That was a whole program that he had going on that had been going on for years before I ever came along. It's like, sure, I participated in it, but I didn't invent it. I didn't come along and do anything. Nothing changed because I was there. People act like I'm this person who came along and was like trying to trick this innocent old man out of money. And it's like, no guys you have the story all wrong first of all that situation was so twisted no one would have been there if there weren't some kind of like carrot he was dangling like oh you get to live in this really nice house and some of your bills will be paid for and i'll lease you a car like if that wasn't part of it nobody would have been there because it was a sick and twisted situation and since then i've been with guys who are successful i've been with guys who are not financially successful i've been with guys who were successful, but they weren't really making money until after we were together. It's all over the place. If I was truly a gold digger and that was my motivation, I would never have left the mansion because I would have inherited money. If all I cared about was money, I'd probably still be married. I don't even accept alimony. It's just, I wanna be able to stand on my own two feet. And 
it's not my motivation. It's an insult that doesn't really bother me anymore. Like I rant about it because when I get into the details, it's just so dumb. Like if I were truly a gold digger, I'd be with some rich old man right now. It's not hard. So it's just dumb. It's just like a really dumb caricature. It's like the go-to insult people go to when they want to disqualify me. And I get it how if you watch the girls next door for a minute, you might think that. But if that was true, then why did I leave? It was just kind of laughable because people who say that just clearly have no idea what I'm like and what I spend my days working on. It's one of those things that's like kind of annoying like a fly, but it doesn't really bother me because I know it's so not true and so dumb and just like one of those go-to things. It's like with Kim Kardashian, like no matter how much she achieves, like no matter how many products she launches or no matter how many people she gets out of jail, people are always still like, uh, sex tape. Who cares at this point? So yeah, that's my favorite misconception. <laughs> anyway, I had fun doing this Q&A. If you guys want me to do another one and have any other questions, feel free to ask and let me know what kind of video you'd like to see next. Bye.